Father, we love you. It is a privilege, it is an honor to worship at your feet, to be called into your presence as your own. Do with us here tonight what you alone can do. Let nobody live here the same way they can. In Jesus' precious name. Wave your hands to the King of Kings. Give him a clap of hand. Welcome three people near you to the presence of the Lord as you take your seat. To be called into your presence as your room. What a privilege. Father, we give you the praise and the honor. Thank you tonight. In Jesus' name. Preserved by divine purpose. Part two. In the first service, we looked at the connection between God's purpose for a person's life and divine preservation. I remember saying in the first service that purpose is a preservative of life and destiny. Being where you are meant to be, doing what you are meant to do. For example, facing the career you are meant to face by God. Established in that marital purpose that is yours. Establishing that ministry covering that is yours is a preservative of life and destiny. Note it like this, that the path of divine purpose is a path of divine protection. The path of divine purpose is a path of divine protection. Again, it was my father, Bishop David Oyedepo, I heard from that when you are on track, you can't be trapped. When you are on your track in life, on your track in destiny, you can't be trapped by the devil. When you are on, the, on, on, on track, you can't be trapped by the enemy. When you follow his instruction, you escape frustration. When you follow God's instruction, you escape frustration. You follow his instruction, you escape destruction. In the book of Proverbs chapter 26 and in verse 2, he said, as a bird by wandering and as a swallow by flying, so the curse Costless shall not come. My understanding is until the bird takes off from its nest and begins to wander, it cannot be wounded. In the same manner, until a man or woman steps out of his God's ordained place in destiny, he cannot be trapped. The easiest way to kill a bird is to get it out of his nest of security. The easiest way to destroy a man or a woman is to take them from their God-ordained God place of destiny and they become cheap to be destroyed. 
What happens at your appointed place? What happens when you locate your place in God and stay there? Your place of assignment. Your place of spiritual, of spiritual co coverage. What happens? Second Samuel chapter 7 verse 10 tells us what happens. He said, moreover, I will appoint a place for my people, Israel, and I will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them anymore as before time. Look at that again. I will appoint a place for my people Israel. I will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them anymore as before time. Three things you note at your appointed place. Number one, your appointed place is your place of flourishing and fruitfulness. He said, I will plant them in the place of their own. It is the place of your planting and it is when you are planted that you flourish. Your appointed place is your place of flourishing and fruitfulness. Whether it is in the area of your assignment in life, the work of your hands, the place God has positioned you to walk, whether it is in, the, in your place of worship or service, your appointed place is your place of fruitfulness. Flourishing and fruitfulness. Number two, your appointed place is your place of stability and establishment. It says a place of their own and they shall not move anymore. It's your place of stability and establishment. In case you want to be stable in life, you want your life to be stable, you want to be established, find where God planted you. If, if God planted you as a businessman, don't struggle to become a pastor. Otherwise, you will be a destabilized, unstable pastor. If God planted you to be a pastor, don't struggle to become a politician. Otherwise, you will be an unstable, destabilized politician. If God planted you in this, in this ministry, don't try to run up and down. If he planted you in that ministry, don't try to run from there. Why? Because your appointed place is your place of stability and establishment. Thirdly, your appointed place is your place of security and immunity. He said the son of wickedness shall not afflict them anymore. It's your place of security and immunity. Wherever God has planted you, what he has for you in life, in that place you have immunity. In that place you have security. If you take yourself from where God planted you, you defend yourself. If you take yourself from what God wants you to do with your life, you defend yourself. In this assignment, I have immunity and security. As I face this assignment, there is no witch ever born or manufactured. That can resist my journey on this assignment. In this assignment, there is no wicked man, no matter how wicked, that can resist my path of assignment. Because in your appointed place, you have security. In your appointed place, you have immunity. Also, God planted me in Nigeria, in Abuja, not America. He planted me in Nigeria, in Abuja, not Europe. If I plant myself anywhere other than where God planted me, I have to fight my own battles. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. That is why it is very, very crucial for everybody to locate his appointed place. I give you three examples of people that had experience of the appointed place. Example number one, Abraham. 
Abraham was what you might call an outstanding failure. As long as he lived by himself, nothing was working. As long as he lived his own life, he followed his own plans, he followed his own purpose, his own program, nothing was working. But the moment he stepped into the center of God's plan for his life, as a matter of fact, Abraham's family was a family that you might call a family that had what I call the trinity of failure. And what was that? Dying before time. Living without impact. And starting without finishing. Abraham's father started a journey he didn't finish. Abraham's brother now lived without relevance. Abraham's brother, Lot's father, his name was Haran, died prematurely before his own father. According to Genesis chapter 11 verse 28. And Haran died before his father. Is it a good thing for his son to die before his father? He died before his father, terror, in the land of his nativity, in the awe of the Chaldees. So Abraham was, Abraham hailed from a family of premature death, family, family of existing without relevance, and family of starting without finishing. Because his father started a journey to go to Canaan, couldn't finish. That was the kind of family he came out from. Please sit down. Until God called him out of such a background. And everything changed. Everything worked instantly. This outstanding failure became all of a sudden an outstanding success. Abraham passed through all manner of terrains. Sleeping in the bare open air on his way. Get to the land of Canaan. Nobody knows how many days he spent on the road. Anywhere night met them, they slept. When the day broke, they continued the journey. Yet no wild animal could back at them. No serpent could dare them. Because they were on the path of divine purpose. Am I speaking to anybody here? When he got, when he was, it was time to sacrifice his son, he went to the mountain. Please sit down. He went to the mountain and right, and for three days he took that journey. There was no injury. When he went after those that captured Lot, he engaged them. There was not a hurt or a harm on his body. The only place Abraham messed up when, was when he decided to go down to Egypt like we read here. In the streets of destiny. And God did not ask him to go there. He didn't ask God. And then he began to lie. And to compromise. Because when you leave the path of purpose. You are on the path of compromise. Am I communicating? Very crystal clear. A man stepping out of his own plan. Into God's own purpose. And how God rose to his defense. My example number two will be the example of the children of Israel. When Israel traveled in the direction of destiny, they went under the cover of the glory. When they, when they traveled in the direction of destiny, they went under the cover of the glory. The, the, the cloud of glory is the covering of men who are on the path of purpose. Say that again. The cloud of glory is the covering of people who are on the pathway of purpose. You cannot be on the path of divine purpose and be, and be cloudless. You cannot be on the path of divine purpose and be gloryless. And the Bible said in Isaiah chapter 4 and in verse 5, he said, for upon all the glory shall be a defense. God asked them to come out of Egypt and go into Canaan. And as they went, the glory was their canopy. Exodus chapter 13, verse 21 to 22. Exodus 13, 21 to 22. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them in the way. And by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of the fire by night from before his people. Beloved brothers and sisters, I don't know what you have. If you do not have the glory, you are poor. 
the highest level of poverty and bankruptcy is glorylessness. And the highest level of wealth and riches is, 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 is glorifulness. To be filled with glory. Israel, on the path of purpose, carried the canopy of the glory. They were untouchable, unharmable, unpursuable, unhurtable, indomitable, indefatigable, irresistible, unfightable. There was no, no devil that could stand them 40 years in the desert. Be, beyond that, God said, as, as, as you have agreed to go where I have asked you to go, my angel will take you there. Exodus 23 and in verse 20, he said, Behold, I send my angel before you to keep the way. That is first and foremost to keep you in the way. Angelic security is the inheritance of people on divine purpose. Angelic security to keep you in the way and then to bring you into the place which I have prepared. I have prepared. Angel, I, I will, I will, provided you have decided to go where I want you to go. You are not permitted to go on your own. Please take note of this and don't forget forever. To go in his direction is to go with his protection. When he said, when he says, my son, my daughter, this is my plan for your life. When you go in his direction, you go with his protection. When you go in your own direction, you fight your own battles. When you follow your own will, you face your own wars. But when, when you follow his will, he fights your war. Is God speaking here? Say amen. amen. And, and, and the third example and the final I'll give in, the, in this service is the example of Paul the Apostle. How a person can be on the path of divine purpose and no matter how much both man and devil hate you, they can't finish you. If God said, my son, this is my plan for you. This is my purpose for you. This is what I want you to do with your life. And you decided to follow that plan. It doesn't matter who hates you. It is an inconsequential hatred. It's a hatred that will generate for them migraine headache for nothing. A, hat a hatred that will cause them arthritis and ulcers. Because they can hate you, but they cannot harm you. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? They can hate you like with passion, but they cannot hurt you a dime. Paul the Apostle, a man of very unusual sense of purpose. In Philippians chapter 3 and in verse 13 to 14, he said, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. He said, I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I am, I am alive to reach a mark. I am alive to hit a target. I am alive to fulfill God's purpose for my life. I am not just wasting time. I am not just having fun on it. I am a messenger on assignment. I want to hit a mark before I leave this world. I want to hit a target before I leave this world. When Paul the Apostle was going to Jerusalem, a prophet by the name Agabus carried Paul's mantle, carried Paul's and tied his hand. And he said, so shall the Jews in Jerusalem do to the man that owned this mantle. And everybody began to weep and to cry. Paul, please don't go. Paul, please don't go. And he looked at them and said, what mean ye? You want to weep and break my heart? I am not only willing to go to Jerusalem. I am willing to suffer these things that I might fulfill my cause with joy. 
Acts chapter 20 verse 24. He said, but none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself. So that I might finish my course, my assignment in life with joy. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the grace, the gospel of the grace of God. He's telling them I am a man on purpose. I am a man of destiny. I am a man on divine assignment. I am a man on divine agenda. I am not just on earth to have fun and have pleasure. I am here to fulfill an agenda. Beloved, that man was indestructible. That Paul. Somebody said, is that right? Yes. He, he gave us a chronology of his encounters. In fact, it looks like at a point like death rejected him. In fact, it looks like death couldn't hurt him until he voluntarily decided it to die. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 to 27, he said, are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors, more abundant. In stripes, above measure. In prisons, more, nobody enter prison like myself. More frequent. In death, often. That is, I came face to face with death frequently. Of the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes, save one. Thrice I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. And I'll show you where he was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. One night and one day I have been in the deep, 24 hours in the depth of the ocean. And he is not fish. Eh? And he is not frog. How does a human being survive in the depth of the ocean for 24 hours? Somebody say, purpose kept him alive. In journeys, often in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils by the hidden, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. In weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Yet, like we say in Nigeria, it's still day. Kakraka. Unshakable, undaunted, indefatigable, couldn't be tired out, tireless, weariless. Energetic, enthusiastic, optimistic. He didn't drop in enthusiasm once. Take your seat. He said he was stoned, and they, and we see the account in Acts chapter fourteen, verse twenty and twenty-one, where Paul the apostle was stoned. The Bible said, and there came certain certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium. They persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, they drew him out of the city concluding that he has died. Am I communicating? I am sure that they noted all the parameters of death and realized this is a dead guy. Somebody said, check his, is he breathing? No. Check his pulse rate. Any pulse? No. How are his eyes? Fixed. Dilated. Drag him out of town. Assuming, concluding that he's dead. How be it as the disciples stood around about him Many people are stoned and nobody is available to stand around them. But as the disciples stood around about him, he jacked up. No prayer. He, what brought him out was regenerated from inside. No prayer. He rose up, came into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Debe. And when, and when they had preached the gospel to that city... And have taught many, they returned again to Lystra, to Iconium. And is it a man they just killed? That is moving about preaching like this? It looks to me like when he stood up. The next question is, where is the next program? Where is the next crusade? Where are they waiting for us? force me out before now but I was not ready they wanted to stone me kill me before now but I was not ready 
a ship scattered in the midst of the ocean. I was there for 24 hours, but I was not ready. They beat me with rods, but I was not ready. The Sahendrin and the, and the Pharisees did everything, but I was not ready. I still had assignment. The book of Ephesians was still inside. Philippians had not come out. First and second Timothy were still inside. Thessalonians was still inside. I have not fully downloaded everything I came into this world to download. So I was not ready now. I don't know about somebody hearing the sound of my voice. I don't know who is looking for your premature death. But I announce to you as your pastor, you are not yet ready. Praise the Lord, I believe you have been blessed by the word you just heard and I know your life can never be the same. If you would like to fulfill the purpose of God for your life, it is important that you surrender your life to Jesus and make your ways right with him. Pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner and I need your help. Come into my life and make me a new person. Today I have decided to follow you, Jesus, and not turn it back. From today I go forward ever and backward never. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. I believe you learned that prayer. Let us know that you prayed that prayer. Our phone numbers are on the screen and our email address. And we shall pray in addition with you to cause you to be established in the Lord in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen.